find elementary matrices E1, E2, and E3, and the matrix U in row echelon form such that this equation holds true when A is equal to this 3 by 3 matrix. So what we are essentially trying to do is we are going to row reduce matrix A until we get a matrix that is in row echelon form. And we're going to row reduce matrix A by performing elementary row operations, which is the same thing as multiplying A by elementary matrices. So we have to find specifically three elementary row operations in order to reduce A into row echelon form. So we have to be careful to not use redundant or unnecessary operations here because we only have three operations to work with. Okay, so let's, let's go on with this process. So if I'm going to try and get this into row echelon form, I know that row echelon form needs two requirements. The first requirement is that all my zero rows are in the bottom of my matrix, are in the last row of my matrix. So if I had a row of zeros, it should be the bottom row. Okay. And I also know that every pivot must be the right to the right of the pivot in the row above that. So this is obviously not in row echelon form because this is my pivot in row one and this is my pivot in row two. And my pivot in row one is to the right of my pivot in row two. Or in other words, my pivot in row two is to the left of my pivot in row one. And it has to be to the right. So a good way to start is to then swap row two and row one. So if we have row two swapped with row one, then we'll get this matrix. So we have four, 14, and zero. And then now row two becomes row one. So we have zero, eight, two. And then of course, the third row remains the same. So what's wrong about this now? Well, it's still not in row echelon form because here, we have our pivot in the second row, which is indeed to the right of our pivot in the first row, but our pivot in the third row is to the left of our pivot in the second row. And since the third row is below the second row, we need to reduce this so that this pivot is to the right. So we have to get rid of this pivot. We need this entry to be a zero. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if we take, if we replace row three with row three plus two times row one, then what you'll see is row 1 remains the same, 4, 14, and 0. Row 2 remains the same, 0, 8, and 2. But now row 3, we have this entry plus 2 times that entry. So 2 times by 4 is 8, and negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So that's good. We have now eliminated that entry such that our pivot is no longer in the first entry in row 3, or the first column in row 3. So continuing with that, we have 8. We have 14 here, sorry, that's 2 times by row 1, which is 2 times by 14, which is 28. And row 3 must be added to 28. So we have negative 12 plus 28, or in other words, 28 minus 12. And that is going to be equal to 16. Okay. And now over here, we have 2 times by 0, 2 times by row 1, which is 0. And then 0 plus 4, which is row 3, is still going to be 4. Okay. So that's good news. We now have this pivot that is one place to the right, than what it originally was. But that's still not row echelon form because our pivot needs to be strictly to the right of the pivot in the row above this. In this case, our pivot in both these rows, which is the first non-zero entry in a particular row, is in the same column. So it doesn't satisfy the requirements for row echelon form. So we need to get rid of this pivot now such that this entry will be our pivot. So how do we do that? Well, if we now replace row three with row three minus two times by row two, then we'll end up with the following. So row one remains the same. As you can see, we haven't affected it over here. So we have four, 14, and zero. Row two remains the same because we're changing row three. So row two becomes zero, eight, and two. And now I just want to point out quickly before I go ahead and perform this operation, that I, there's a reason why I'm doing this slowly one operation at a time. And that's because these elementary row operations correspond with elementary matrices. So I need to make sure that I'm doing them one by one and in a particular order so that I can find my elementary matrices easier. Okay, so back to this, back to this row operation. Row three is going to be replaced with row three minus two times by row two. Okay, so zero minus two times by zero is indeed still zero. Okay, now we have 16 minus two times by eight. Two times by eight is 16, so 16 minus 16 is zero. And that's wonderful, because now we don't have a pivot in the same column as row two. Okay, so continuing, row three minus two times by row two. So this is our row three entry, which is four, and minus two times by our row two entry is going to be four minus two times by two, which is four minus four, which is indeed zero. And this is very good now, because this is indeed 
in row echelon form because our zero row, our row of zeros, if we had one, which we do, is in the bottom, and every pivot is to the right of the pivot above it. So these are two pivots in this particular matrix, and this pivot, which is in the row below this row, is to the right of this pivot, which is crucial. So this is in row echelon form. So what we needed to do is we, need to, we needed to find these elementary matrices, E1, E2, and E3, such that when we transform A through these elementary matrices, we end up with a matrix U that is in row echelon form. So we've transformed these matrix A, we've transformed matrix A via these elementary row operations into this, which is now in row echelon form. And we've done that through three steps. So we can say, we can safely say that this matrix is indeed our matrix U. Okay, but now you may ask, well, what is E1, E2, and E3? What are E1, E2, and E3, these elementary matrices? Well, an elementary matrix is a matrix when you transform the identity matrix with that same operation. So for example, our three by three identity matrix is ones in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So that's what our three by three identity matrix is. And if we were to perform this operation on our identity matrix, then we'd be swapping this row with this row. So we'd end up with zero, one, zero, because row two becomes row one, and row one becomes row two, so it's one, zero, zero, and the third row is unaffected. So this is indeed E1. That's our elementary matrix E1. Now, our elementary matrix E2 is going to be this operation performed on our identity matrix. So what we have then is row 3 being replaced with row 3 plus 2 times by row 1. So our identity matrix is this. And obviously you should endeavor to write these matrices more neatly and in a much better format if you were to do this in a test. But since I can speak to you and we are doing this in the interest of time, I'm not going to pay too much attention to formatting my answers in a very intuitive way. Okay, so I'm replacing row 3 with row 3 plus 2 times by row 1. So this is being replaced with this plus 2 times by this. So this entry is then going to be replaced with 0 plus 2 times by 1. So 0 plus 2 times by 1 is 2. Now 0 plus 2 times by 0 is still 0, so that remains the same. And 1 plus 2 times by 0 is 1. So this then is our elementary matrix E2. Now this operation gives us our third elementary matrix. So if we look at our identity matrix, 1, 1, 1 on the diagonals and zeros everywhere else, if we were to perform this operation, we're replacing row 3 with row 3 minus 2 times by row 2. So 0 minus 2 times by 0 is 0, and 0 minus 2 times by 1 is negative 2. And then 1 minus 2 times by 0 is still 1. So this then is elementary matrix E3. So what we've essentially said is if we were to take this matrix A and we were to multiply it by this matrix E1 with E1 on the left of matrix A, because remember matrix multiplication is not commutative. So A times by E1 is different to E1 times by A. So if we had E1 times by A, and then that gives us a particular matrix, and then we had E2 times by that matrix, and then we had E3 times by that matrix, we would end up with matrix U. So that should be an equal sign, enough negative U. So what we're essentially saying is that elementary row operations correspond to elementary matrices. And when multiplied, when you multiply a matrix by these elementary matrices, what you get is the matrix that is resultant from the corresponding elementary row operation. So we've solved the question and we have found E1, E2, and E3, as well as um, matrix U, which is in row echelon form. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. And if you did, please don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you have any questions regarding everything that I've covered today, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.